Okay, uh, the next tape we have is our uh, drive block progression and run block drill tape, okay? Now, like the Pass Pro tape, I don't want to belabor the point, but uh, we do a little six-bag agility here, and sometimes it's pre-stretch, sometimes it's post-stretch, but it's just a little focus-up deal. And as you can see, it's uh, first rep through, down and back is a high knee, pump your arms, getting over the bag, you know, getting one foot in each uh, slot in between the bags. And then uh, as we're coming back, I'll fast forward it. It's a lateral shuffle, pump your arm, pump, 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 eyes up, eyes up, hips down, football position. And what we're trying to do is make sure we have their focus. And, uh, you know, when you're going over the bags, you've got to get yourself physically and mentally tuned together or you'll stumble on the bags. It doesn't mean it has to be tremendous exertion. It's not what it's about. But it's just kind of a focus up physically and a focus up mentally. Loosen you up a little bit and kind of get you ready to do a little bit of activity, get the blood into the muscles, and as I said, get your mind focused up. You want to have good pumping of the arms, okay? Next thing through is a little ins and out deal. You know, it's just a forward, backward, side shuffle. And uh, what's nice about it is you got to keep your hips down and your weight still. Especially when you're outside in the wet grass, if you start leaning back and forward as you're going through this thing, you'll kind of fall. And it's just another little balance, you know, deal uh, as well as a, uh, uh, you know, as well as an agility deal. But uh, it's really for focus. Okay, and we're going to come back with the same activity. Let's just get through this here fast. I think you get the point. We do some cuts here. Where we're just cutting side to side, shuffle cut, shuffle cut, shuffle cut. And sometimes we'll do some high jumps. But I think you get the picture. I'm going to get through that pretty quick here right now because uh, I want to move on. All right, now, as you can see, the first thing we do here, uh, you know, this tape's a little cut off, is we do stance, okay, and we do it by command, all right? Now, we normally line up on grids, and right now for spring ball, we don't have all the grids painted in. You see the yard lines, goal line 5, 10, 15, 20 with horizontal lines. We also put vertical lines in that would go every five yards. So just imagine a vertical line through the crotch of every two players there, you know what I'm saying? And then you'd have five-yard uh, boxes is what you'd amount to, you know? So you'd have vertical and horizontal lines. And what you do is you put everybody on an X. Now what you see there is two groups, you know, you have four in front and four in back. But normally with a whole offensive line, you'd put five in front. The middle plane being the center with all the backup centers behind them in five-yard increments. Right guards to the right, five-yard increments. Right tackles all the way to the right and left guard and left tackle, et cetera. So you'd have the whole offensive line in or tight ends out there and 18, 25 deep, you know, uh, 18, 25 people spread out, you know, five or six across and, you know, five deep. And now you can work with them by command. And that's really what's critical. To be able to work the whole front on stance, on one step, on two step, and they're all working together. Now you choose all together, line by line, whatever you choose, but there's an organized fashion instead of, okay, you know, let's just kind of get on the line and let's talk about, you know, stance. And that's not organized and you can't be efficient. The goal is, is to get through this in a five, ten minute period of time and be efficient in what you're doing and be organized, okay? Now our stance is by command. Now what we want to do is this, you know, the film just chopped off the very first portion here. But basically I would tell them, okay, everybody off the line a yard. So they back up one yard from this line. And when I give the command to up, they're going to walk up with a strong demeanor like they're approaching the line of scrimmage. Their feet are going to be wider than slightly wider than shoulder width. Their weight's going to be on the inside half of the feet, and they're going to be standing tall looking dead at me. Okay? Now, sometimes some of our guys still have a stagger, and we're not, we, you know, our tight ends will be no stagger. Our offensive line will have a little bit of a stagger. I'm trying to get it less and less and less of a stagger, okay? The most I want to see right now is a heel toe, the most. And we're not there yet, and that's where we're headed to. It's hard to break, you know, older habits. Now, the reason we're in that stance is because we're a multiple offense. We're going to pull, uh, we're going to zone block, we're going to pass block, trap block. And, you know, when you have a stagger or a big stagger, sometimes it's hard to work one direction or the other. Then you really have to coach left and right-handed stances, and uh, I just think a battle stance is a good stance. So weight on the inside half of the feet, knees are in, and that's how they approach the line. They stand up tall that way. That's command one, up. Command two, down. And that's where you see them right here, right before they stick their hand out, right there. That's down. They want to just bend down at the knees, keep their heels on the ground so they're flexion at the ankle, flexion at the knee, arching the low back. That's down. Hand by the side. Okay? Next command is hand out. And they're going to take their dominant hand and they're going to stick it out. That's what you're seeing right here. So if they're a righty, it's their right hand. If they're a lefty, they put their left hand out, whatever stance they're going to be in. Hand out. The next command is stretch. And they're going to reach forward, out, and down and place their hand on the ground. Now, what I want to see is I want to see that offhand against the outside of the thigh. I want to see the fingertips closed. Okay, I want to see the thumb pointed up. 
I want to see the off elbow against the outside of the thigh plate. The reason I like that is because when you cock and punch, which you're going to see in a minute, it's an even movement. Why curl your hand forward in front of you so that you got to curl it all the way back again to cock and punch? I don't want to see that. Make it smooth motions. Okay, now I'm walking around checking. What am I checking? I want to see if the weight's on the inside half of their feet. I want to see if they're off arm, their forearms against the outside of their thigh. I want to see if their eyes are up, their back is flat. So we give them a little quick hands, okay? Once again, this film is cut off here. Standing up. So I'm saying, okay, up, down, hand out, stretch. And they're holding it, and I'm walking around, and I'm looking again, and I'm checking that stance. Knees in, weight on the inside half. And I'm just repping that out a couple times, all right? Now, the next drill we're going to go to is something we call one step. It's the first step of the drive block. It's really the most critical step. Okay, because on that first step, what you want to do is you want to have the ability to gain no ground. You want to almost step up and down with your lead foot, whatever, it's right or left. Now, that doesn't matter, okay? You're almost up and down. They say six inches, but it's certainly no more than that, okay? You want to pick that foot up and you want to pound it into the ground and land on the inside half of the whole foot. On that same, on that same step, you want to draw your hands back to your hips and you want to keep your chest on your knee and you want to be in a low position. So I'll tell them, okay, here we go, stance. One step, right foot on one, set, one. And what I want to hear out of them when I say one is, I want to see that foot pound in, and I want to hear it, ah! And why do I want to hear that? Because I want to know they're straining, because this is a powerful deal. It's like a bench press with 500 pounds on that bench, you're going to strain, you're going to go, ah, to get that weight up. That's what it's all about here, okay? That's what we're doing here. We're straining. Now, if I look down here and I'm coaching it up with you, some of these guys' first steps are pretty good. They're, bar they're barely gaining ground. If you look to the left here, three people to the left front row, that's too big a step. It's almost over a foot. That's too big. You gotta get it down in a hurry. You gotta get it down in a hurry so that you can make contact on the second step. And that second step can fully be on the ground on contact. So that first step's gotta be fast and it's gotta be up and down. So that stance, one foot, right foot on one, set one. You got it. All right, the chest should be down on the knee. We're a little high. That's what I'm telling them, sink down sink down, be low, low pad win, okay, stance one step, left foot on one, set, here we go, one, oh, and they're going to step back, all right, they're drawing that hand back, they're taking that first step, keeping their chest on their knee, going through that progression, okay, now we're going to stance two steps, on one, two, and I'll say, okay, here we go, stance two steps, on one, two, right foot, it tells them they're going to, first step is with the right foot, set, one, two, now we got a couple guys rushing me, it's on my command, Set, one, two. Now what you can see on two is, are you gonna punch that back knee through? And you see their hands, they're not reaching with those hands, they're coming right under the chin. Now looking all the way to the right here, this first guy to the right, Jordan Black here, he look at his, raise his chest up off his knee. That's no good. Okay, why is that no good in the simulation of a dry block on air? Because you're lifting your pads up and telling the defender to stick, up, stick you in your breastplate. Now, if you look it over one man to the left, you see a nice flat back, chest on the knee. Okay? This is all air. All we're doing is teaching the footwork of a block. One, two. And we put the hands underneath the chin because we never lead with our hands on a drive block. We always want to get our back foot on the ground and get our pads under pads. We don't want to be a hand reacher. All right? Let's let it go. We'll go again here. We'll do this again. I'm going to go two steps on one, two. Probably going to go left foot now. Here we go. Sit. One, two. A little better job, pads down low, okay? Now, what I like to do is go, okay, we're going two steps, simultaneous on hike, right foot, sit, hike, boom, boom, and they're stepping simultaneously now, not on my command, just one hike and give me two consecutive steps, boom, boom, okay? Short first one, punch the back knee through, all right? Just kind of repping that out right now, you know? Here we go, going to the left foot, on hike, set, hike, one, two. Okay, got to get used to that. Not one big long step to contact. Two steps, two steps, two steps. All right, weight on the inside half of the feet. Eyes are up, back is flat, whole deal. Just kind of coaching that up. You get the idea of the drill, okay? Now, next drill is called power walk. Want to get them nice and low. What we're trying to teach them now is that after we punch a defender, we want to drive them with our legs. A lot of guys punch defenders, they wrestle them with their upper body. You don't want to wrestle them. After you punch, you want to be a drive blocker with your legs. So you have to learn how to contact the ground with your legs and press off the ground, heel on the ground, inside half on the ground. That's what we're doing. They're mirror me. I'm bringing them to me and back. And look at them. I want you know they're nice power steps. Knee up, heel down. Knee up, heel down. Weight on the inside half. 
getting used to how to power walk with low hips. That's what a drive block is. And see, too many times when they start the drive block, and you'll see our guys doing the drills I'm going to show you in a minute. They get up on their toes, they wrestle with their upper body, they don't know how to go from a punch to a drive in their legs, and then back to a finish with the hands on the plate with the upper body. They don't understand that concept. And that's one of the drills to start to teach it. Here's another one. It's called feet, drive, move. The first phase is feet. Now we partner them up. And with those grids, you can do the same thing. Put line two up the line one, line three up the line four, et cetera, et cetera. And you can work them all together on the grids. And all we want to do right now is fit them up. It's as if they've already struck the defender. They've just punched. Their eyes are up. Their face is right in the defender. Their pad on a pad. The weight's on the inside half of the feet. Okay. The back is flat. And what they're going to do right now is they're going to power walk this defender back in a fit position. So now we took that power walk and we made it more similar to a drive block. We're fitting them up and we're going to power walk them up. We're going to make them like they're moving a bus up a hill. The defender should give good resistance. Bend down a little more than you see here. Arch your back and give them resistance so they feel they have to drive this with their legs to get this movement going. Pick your knee up and get your heel on the ground. There it is. Walk it back. So I give them the command feet and they're walking it back. Now we're going to switch it up. Here we go. Sit. You're going to get them all fit up. Sit. Waiting for them to get set. Here we go. Feet. And we're driving, drive, 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 drive. See them strong steps? See how hard they are? Like pistons. That's what it's got to be. Okay, now we're coming back with feet drive. And when I say feet, they're going to power walk them. When I say drive, they're going to pick up the pace. But it's only slightly. I do not want to see their feet chopping. Because now we're not power anymore. Now we're pitter-patter on our toes and there's no power. Sit. Feet. Drive. Slightly pick up the pace. You can hardly tell in the film. That's the way it should be. Coming back, same principle now. We're going to get them going with the commands and get them driving. Feet, drive. Slightly pick up the pace. And what you say is pick your knees up a little faster, but keep getting your heel on the ground. Now we're going feet, drive, move. When they get the move command, the defenders won't, I won't even say move. The defend, defenders will look at my hands. When I give them a release, one right, left, or straight back, they completely ease off and they backpedal. I want the offensive player, after they're in the drive mode, to feel a void and get them used to the concept. When they feel a void, they need to climb with their knees, roll their hips and glue to the defender as opposed to chasing them with their butt back and reaching with their hands. Here we go. Set feet. Drive. Move. And then you see the hips roll and they glue. And that's an important concept because defenders move. And when they move, you've got to get used to gluing, locking the plate, and finishing the block. Some guys are quicker than others on it. You've got to condition it. Next drill is called leverage. Okay, it's called leverage. Now, all they're doing is getting used to resetting and climbing back under a defender, dropping their hips. The whole idea of dropping their center of gravity and resetting, climbing with their knees and getting their heels on the ground. Some of these are more sloppy than others, obviously. But as they reset, they want to be able to pick their knees up and get their heels on the ground. It's a leverage drill. It's a body position understand the concept of repositioning, getting another bite, driving your knees up, the whole, that whole thing. And, you know, it's just all body mechanics and blocking mechanics and on the move, proper leg drive. Now we end up coming off of those grids. Those are all grid drills, you know, all, and we're going to go to the sled now. We're working on six-point explosions. We're on our toes, our knees, and our hands are on the ground. On hike, they're going to draw back and cock and punch. They would draw back on hike, hands to the hips, and the thumbs are up. We strike with the heel of the palm. The thumb is up, heel of the palm, fingertips closed. And all we're doing is striking. I'll say reset, set, hike, reset, set, hike, reset, set, hike. You better a little better view here. See that open hand punch? I don't want that. See those hands? Thumbs are up, close the fingertips, strike with the heel of the palm. Getting used to a draw punch. Boom. Boom. I love the punch. The only thing I want to do after I punch, though, I don't want to become a pusher and a, and a muscler. I want to punch it and then drive it with my legs. I want my eyes to be up. I want to get pad to a pad. Okay? Critical. Critical. All right? So those are six-point explosions, and we're just kind of repping those out. You need to coach that. You can do that on the bag. I have this bag staked in. You can do it on a sled. You can do it on a body. I, I do all of them. I'm going to do them all. You know, all different repetitions for the same uh, deal. I think, uh, you know, I think it's good. Different modes of training. You know, but everyone needs to, every kid needs to experience every piece of that progression and then learn how to piece it together. Otherwise, it's almost impossible. 
And that's something that I think if you're going to teach well, you teach in progressions and uh, you rep it out and you, you really make sure they understand the concept. When they do, kids are great. They're going to give it back to you. When they don't, it's because you're not really explaining it and they're not drilling it and breaking it down. And it's harder if you don't do that. Okay? So we go part whole is really what's happening here. And we're into part right now. Sometimes we'll put pieces together. Now, the next piece is a second step punch. You know, stepping with your first step, getting your hands in your hips, is relatively easy. Now, the second step is a contact step. That's the critical step of the drive block. Now, that's harder. To get them to have all their weight in their up foot, to get them to beat their hands and their pads to the bag with their back foot. Get that back foot there first so you have a brace. That's hard. And they'll struggle with it. They're jumping. You see a couple guys here way too high. Stay down low. Stay down low when you get that punch and that brace foot in there. So we're working second step. It's a critical deal here. You only see a couple reps and we're going to get a better angle here. Let me fast forward to a better. Here we go. Okay, watch this right now. Here we go. We're in, we're, we've already taken the first step. We put them in that position right now. Then I say hike and they just rip it and punch it. Boom! Watch that left foot get on it. Boom! See that left foot get on the ground? That's the brace. See now, you know, really if I slow this down, what you're seeing is it's not good enough. See the contact point right there? See that? He's contacted the bag, but his foot's in the air. And I just think about that for one minute, okay? You're telling them you want to get great push on a defender, but you're contacting the defender <laughs> with your brace foot up in the air. So you all, <laughs> all your power is coming out of on your toes on your right foot. And you wonder why you get your butt whooped. That's how you get your butt whooped. Because if you break it down and see the contact point, there's not enough power on the contact point, okay? And, you know, this is a great drill to find that out. All right, so that's what we're working on. Can we beat? Our pads and hands to that bag with our back foot. Can we get it on the ground? Can we get it on the ground? That's what I'm talking about right now. It's critical. Critical. That's better. That's better. See it? That's better. Now, what you can imagine now is it's a little high, but now I can drive. I'd really even like to see that heel on the ground of their right foot more. Now I can drive and get my left foot knee up and heel down and I start moving the bus up the hill as opposed to a lunger and a pusher. I'm a driver. Love it. All right. That's what we're drilling. Switching feet now. We're switching feet. Let's move on here. You get the concept. All right. So now we went to punches to second step punches and now we're going to end up going to uh, one drive. So we kind of put a little a couple of we're going to put a couple of pieces together here in a minute and put it in sequence a little bit of sequence which is critical all right you're going to see what i'm talking about in one minute okay so now one step punch and drive oh okay now we're going to go from just one step and just second step now i'm going to say one step punch drive right foot i'm going to go set one they're going to step with their right foot and i'm going to say live and they're going to take off from that point set one live Boom. now they're sequencing say sequencing now what you're noticing here though when you start to sequence problems occur once again now, hand, you know, those hands and pads are getting on that pad before the back foot. See it? Okay? So we're, as you start to sequence, bad habits come again. And you got to go, you know, you got to strip it down and get it right. That's what it's all about. It's hard. It's hard. Set. One. Drive. That's a little better. Okay? You got that drill. That's one drive right foot, one drive left foot. Sequence. 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 Break it down. Part, part, part. Part, semi, whole. Part, whole, whole. You know, keep that in mind all the time. Boom. Okay. So that's just the drill we do. And what's nice is it's on a bag. Bag's not going anywhere. You can rep it out. It's not over. Sometimes they'll do that in pre-practice. It's a good pre-practice. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Now we get live on the same sled. That's why I have it, you know, against, it's, it's wedged into some uh, stakes. Now we'll go uh, hole. Remember I told you, part, part, hole. Here it is, just hole. On hike, right foot, live drive box set. Hike, boom, boom. Now, do all the foot, do all the pieces come together? Do we draw on one short first step? Punch on two. I think those are happening. If you watch it close, watch the footwork. Boom. Okay. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. One, two. Here it is. One, two. There it is. Okay? You drill, 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 drill. Now, when you get in real life situations with a defender, you don't need to think about it anymore. It's just habit forming. And you just rip and go. And when you get to that point, then you can become a real blocker. Right now, you're a thinker, and that's hard. But you've got to learn. You've got to sequence. Let's go to the next drill. You know, you can see 100 reps of these. It's all the same stuff. Okay? That is a sled progression. Now I'm going to bring you to a one-man sled. I like the one-man sled because you're on an island. You can really watch the film. 
I weight it down with sandbags. The reason is we want to make it harder to move, okay? Now, if you rise up too quick on this thing and you don't keep a flat back and you pick the sled up, it won't move. In order to drive it effectively, you really don't want the sled to rise. Now, we're too high here. This is second step punch here, right? We've already stepped one, that's the drill. One drive, oh, no, I'm sorry, it's one drive. One live, ready, set, one, live. So I'm, I just decided to start with this sequence. So I want to see that first step, short, nice, draw, nice. The only thing I don't like is on his toes too much. Look at the stance on the toes. Okay, set, one, live. Now, not bad trying to get the foot there. What, what don't I like? Get that right heel on the ground, please. You got more power that way. Get on the inside half of the feet and get your knee in. That's how you get the torque, not by rocking on your toes. Close those fingertips, but that's not bad. Now, watch him rise right immediately. See him pick up immediately? That's bad. And that sled doesn't let you do That's what's good about this drill. He should not rise right now. Right now, right at this point right here, instead of lifting his upper body up, he should be bringing his left knee up and getting his left heel on the ground and then get a couple of piston steps together, but not trying to rise immediately. Ah, going nowhere. Now, here's a lot lighter guy, probably 60 pounds lighter, okay, and uh, not near as strong, but the technique's going to be better. Now, some of the technique's poor. Fruit, you know, second step slow, okay, but look at a flat back. Watch the sled. Flat back, flat back, flat back, flat back. Come on, get your heels down. Good right heel, good right heel. Left heel won't get down because of a knee injury, but look at it, look at it. Look at it. See the flat back? No lift up. The sled didn't lift. A little bit, but not enough to stop it. You see the difference? So once again, it teaches you it's not brute strength, man. It's strength and technique. Too big a first step. It's first day of spring, you know, but I mean, look at this. You know, it's good. Here it is. It's too big a first step. Now watch, watch. Look at the contact point. It's taken it in one. That's terrible. I'm overextended. I have no power. It's like I got no juice on contact to get any movement. I'm going to get my butt whooped. Yeah, you know, high, the hand punch. I mean, you know, so hey, you'll learn it. That's what we're doing. Better, not good. Shorter first step, better. A little bit on your toes, though. Look at the punch, how high his hands are. It should be in the base of that V. Too high. Too high. Much too high. Okay? Here's a young guy. Here's a frosh. Ready? One. Two, I don't like the hands. I like to have the fingertips closed, not the fist closed. Okay, I want to strike with the heel of the palm. Okay, here we go. Set. One. Go. Not terrible. Boom. He knees up, knees up, heel down. All right, all right, all right. Another freshman. Set. One. Two. Ah, I had to stop and gather. Why? One. Two, not enough. See, look at, look, at the, look at the second step. We talk about that first step being short. That second step, we want to punch the knee right through the crotch. See him stub his toe? He doesn't gain any ground with that second step. See it? See, there's no brace. He doesn't have a brace under him. The brace is behind him now. So now he's got to gather and then go. Well, guess why? While he's gathering, you know what happened? That defender is kicking his behind. You follow me? See, all the flaws come out here. Here's the, I'll show you some flaws now. We're up on our toes already, I can tell you that. We're taking him in one. I'm telling you that. No good. See, so all we worked on is abandoned right now. And that's what you want to do. This is what you can do on this sled. You can really drill work it here. All right, and then he's trying to get his air. We go at the end, he tried to get some pistons going. Taking him in one. Taking him in one. Okay, everybody understand the coaching points? We can go through this thing faster. Let's get to the next drill. But, I mean, a great, great, you know, great sled work. It really is. And you're just switching it up. They're not getting bored. Now we go to the chute. I'm going to do the same drills in the chute now. This happens to be early in spring. There's no pads, but I don't like using bags. I'll just put some defender in there and let them. Let's get used to punching pads. This is second step punch, not second step punch and drive. I don't want to turn into a drive. I just want a vicious punch, and then a couple of follow steps. Because if you're really uncorking here, there's going to be a couple of follow steps, but not a drive. I want. I'm. I'm doing this drill right now, really for the punch. I want to see it. Sing it, man. Let's go. Boom. And switch the feet. I usually give them two shots. One with the left foot back, one with the right foot back, okay? And to make sure that, make sure, see that back foot's not on the ground, see? You start to get them aggressive with their hands and, and their pads, you know, getting their hands and pads on the back, they forget about their foot, see what I mean? Because really, now they're really focused, I'm going to rip the thing. Well, that's great, but the liability of that is the back foot doesn't come. And you just coach it. Coach it and coach it and coach it and coach it, all right? So you got that drill. All right, so everybody's going to get a couple of reps. Then we're going to go second step punch and drive. So they're going to go from their second step and turn it into a drive.
And you got to coach the defender. They don't want to back up on, on hike. They want to actually rock forward. See, otherwise the target's moving away. I don't know too many defensive linemen that move away when the ball snap. They're getting up the field, so it makes it hard, you know. All right, now, in a minute here, we're going to go second step, punch, and drive. So now he's going to focus on driving this thing as well. So that, hey, rip it and drive, 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 drive. Uh, I thought we were in drive. Maybe not yet. Maybe I wanted to take another rep at it. Maybe we hadn't got enough reps. Yeah, we haven't got enough reps. I'm going through this again. Before I drive it, I want to make sure we really, really are challenging him to rip off the ball and punch the heck out of the thing. You know, really have a strong punch. Really shock the defender. You know, that is just so here. This should be drive now, I think. Unless we're going to go one more time through. Look at that off arm. See that elbow? It's too flaring. Get it against the outside of the thigh board. I think I'm probably correcting him right now. Okay. Actually, yeah, there we go. See, I want second step punch and drive. Boom! Drive, 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 drive. So now we're going from the punch and putting it in sequence to the drive. So I don't want the punch to not be sacrificed now. I want to rip it, but I want to have a semblance of learning to bring my knees with me. There we go. Look at him bring his heels in the ground. Like it. Get your heels down, Jabari. Climb with your knees. Heel, heel, heel. Not great on that rep. Not great on that rep. Okay? Really taking our time here. Probably going to go right foot back and then go through left foot back. Let's see uh, John Teasley. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. Yeah, so... You know, you got to coach the defender and the whole bit. But you understand the drill. Second step punch, second step punch and drive. Both right foot, both left foot. Okay? All right, now. Now we're gonna, probably going to go as one, one live. So I'm going to say, okay, one live right foot. Ready, set. One, live, boom. So all they're doing now is taking a first step. I'm pausing them, and then I'm going live from that point, right? Sequencing drills. Heel down, heel down. Pretty good form, pretty good flat back. Hard with a bag sometimes, you know? But what you can tell is that they have a tight punch, giving them two shots. Boom, boom. Okay? All right, so that's one live. So we went second step punch, second step punch and drive. One live. And then obviously the next thing we're going to do is, you know, live. And then we'll have a strain drill in here, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay? Everybody see what we're doing? Just taking drills and progressioning them. You know, in the course of a day, you just re-repping and repping and repping and getting it to be second nature. Okay, let's see, is this live right now? I'm just giving him a set hike, set hike, boom, yep, see? Now we're just getting used to putting the whole thing. This is whole part now, boom, whole deal. Pretty good, look, 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 look at that. That's pretty good for a freshman. Look at his feet, look at this. Look at the heel on the ground, boom, boom. That's pretty good, I like that. Second step's gotta be a little quicker. Boom, boom, look at the flat back, flat back, so 6'8 guy now. 315 pounds, 20 pounds, 6'8. So, uh, you know, what I'm saying is, is you gotta stay nice and low. Boom, 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 I like that, I like that. All right, that's pretty good. Let's go to the next drill. Next drill is called a, uh, a uh, strain drill. Now, it's awkward because I'm coaching it for the first time, so I'll coach you through the mistakes we're going to make. The idea is you've got to really coach the defenders. Get your feet together, get your hips together, get your eyes up. That defender has got to work together. They've got to stymie the offensive player, begrudgingly give inch by inch, and at the very end, let them accelerate and separate you. Now, if you don't get your inside feet together and your hips together, and you don't form a nice tight wall, the offensive player does, no, does not get a feel for what we're doing, and it's not productive, okay? So you've got to lower your ass, arch your back, etc. Okay, and, and you're going to see it get sloppy here in a minute. Now, on offense, we want to work all the same fundamentals. Don't, because there's two bags here, think you've got to do something different, and that's what's going to happen. See him take him in one, he's taking him in one and getting all out of whack. He's thinking about, oh, I'm going to break this double team. Well, I'm not overly concerned about that right now. What I want to see is contact on the second step. But the purpose of the drill is to hit an immovable object. When you hit the immovable object after you punch, what do you do? Do you turn it into a wrestling match with your upper body? Or do you get your heels on the ground, get your knees up, and start piston, like let, put your legs like pistons and move the bus up the hill? This is where you teach them the transference of punch to drive. What they want to do is wrestle it with their upper body. And this is the most realistic form of a drive block. Because usually when you hit a defender, there is a stalemate. Okay, now I tell the guys on defense, and once you stale him, if he gets up high, jack him up back into the chute and let him know it. Okay, now he's not high, but he took him in one. He's got no power. He's on his toes. Look at his toes. Look at his toes. Look at this. Look at that. I, I, I love when I see that. You can't drive block anybody like that. All the drills we did see, first day one, he's not ready to transfer yet. All right? Watch him gather himself. Wait a minute. Ready? Gather. Heel down. Knees up. All of a sudden, boom. Instant power. It's a great teaching message to watch that. You can see that I'm talking about now. Boom. 
went from a pusher and a wrestler to a driver. The problem is, is it took too long and he would have got his butt whooped. He's got to learn to do that immediately. Get off your toes. Coach the hell out of the defense. Give them all one rep at this a day and they'll become better blockers. Yeah, he's trying to get his second step, but he too, too big a first step. Look at it. Look at his hands. No punch. Kind of went rat trap. Look at the guys on defense. Did I not say to put your inside feet together? Can we follow directions? Okay. See, this is the problem. You've got to coach the hell out of it. Otherwise, it's sloppy. I mean, that's just sloppy. You're getting nothing done there. Getting nothing done. See how the bags dent because they don't have their inside feet together on defense? That pisses me off just watching it. All right, let me fast forward this thing. Same thing here. Switch your feet up. I didn't even notice it myself. Now that, now I, you know, I can't let that happen. Okay. See, see, see what he's doing. See how, see like, see how he's readjusting his feet. Let me tell you the reason why he's readjusting his feet. Two things. One, he doesn't gain enough ground on his second step because he gained too much on his first. Two, he's trying to push the bags with his upper body. See him? Then all of a sudden, oh yeah, 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 my legs, my legs, my legs. And then we get some power and we move it back. It's a great drill, man. This is a great drill if you want to teach the fundamentals. There's the second step. The only problem with Jabari right now is he's on his toes. Oh, see, no power. But that's not his fault. That's because this is the worst bag holding job in America. They do not have their inside feet together for power. They're humped up. They're not arched in their low back. Yeah, that's bad. That's my fault. That is my fault. There we go. See, I finally realized it. And I told him. That is my fault. Okay? That's how critical that is. Can't say it enough. All right, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Look at that stance, man. Come on, back it off. Get your heels on the ground. Probably going to take him in one here. Yep, <laughs> how'd I know? You start seeing guys all rocked up on their toes. They're going to take him in one, you know? Okay, here we go. Move on. You get the drill. You understand what we're doing. All right? Got some, you know, walk-ons in here and stuff like that. All right, now. Let's see Vollers. Oh, hang on a minute. Let's see Vollers do this. Let's see if I can get this thing back. There we go. Let's just watch this now because one thing that Kurt's got to learn to do is not take everybody in one. He's on his toes, so he's going to take him in one. Look at that big step. I know that's what I thought, okay? All right. Very aggressive. Got great punch, but can't work together right now. See this? Can't get it all the body going in all the same direction. Now, taking off here, but in poor position on contact. On toes, toes. Now we're trying to get heel, heel, knee, 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 and got our hands too wide. All right, you understand the liabilities. Hey, I don't want to spend a lot of time. This is just about the end of the tape. All I want you to see is a little drill. It's called one-two punch. It's just taking some of the fundamentals we worked on and, and, and getting them used to striking a breastplate on a shoulder pad as opposed to a bag. So I'm just saying on hike, I just want to see two quick steps and a punch. Set, hike, boom, 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 boom. Contact on the second step. Punch the breastplate. Now, I really, wa really want to see the thumbs up on the punch. I want to see pad to pad. That's a pretty good look at it there. Pat, well, I was taking him in one, though. Is he taking him in one? Uh, I can't see. Maybe the film cut it off. Yeah, he's taking him in one. That's no good. But I see how the pads, the pad, you know, that, that's what I'm wanting for this drill. Get pad to pad. Get the hands nice and tight on the plate. It's all about a nice tight punch pad to pad. Now, obviously, we'd like to coach the feet the right way, and I've not done a good job because you can see they're taking them in one. You know what I mean? Same drill, but, you know, second step this, this contact should be occurring on. But what they're focusing on right now is a tight punch with the hands right to the plate and just kind of repping it out. That, that's really what I want to get done here. Just rep it out. Boom, 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 boom. Don't take him in one, though, but this drill is focused on hands to the plate. Okay? All right, that's the dry block tape. There's a series of a lot of drills there, a lot of sequences. One man sled, two man sled, air grids, uh, shoot work, uh, live on man work, all the footwork, all the fundamentals from the stance right through. Go back, rewatch it, listen to the coaching points, and just be a great teacher and plan your day. What's it going to be today? Work on part, 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 whole, or part, 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 semi-whole, whole. But always work in progressions. Thanks very much.